alarm's not going to go off, is it, Jay? No, nah, it may buzz, but. Um, uh, first, I uh, want to thank all the players that, you know, participated in, in training camp. I thought we had a good camp. Uh, it was great to work with both Arizona uh, and Tampa over the course of those a couple of days that they were here. Got a lot of good work in. Um, you know, the roster reduction process, that's never an easy one. Those conversations are always, you know, tough when you're talking to these guys that have worked so hard to have an opportunity in training camp. Uh, but Mike and I met with those guys all, uh, yesterday and informed them of our decision. Got down to uh, 53 and then uh, got, you know, a big bulk of the group back on the practice squad today. So um, productive camp. Um, still got a lot of work to do, but um, we're moving forward and getting ready for week one. Will that work for you? Yeah, we're uh, so this afternoon, Racy McMath will go on injured reserve, um, and we'll sign Cody Hollister back to the active roster. Uh, obviously, Woodside's one of the players that came back on the practice squad, but what did Malik show you throughout the course of training camp and preseason to kind of feel comfortable with that quarterback two role? Yeah, I mean, I thought he, he, I mean, he really improved. Uh, he certainly made some impressive plays in, in the preseason games, but even at practice, um, you know, just the ball coming out of his hand a little quicker, um, you know, throwing with a little bit better anticipation, uh, deciphering, working through coverages. You know, just thought that he was on the on the right track. Um, and I mean, he's still got a long way to go, but uh, certainly trending in the right direction. What has Hollister kind of, or how has he improved over the last couple of years that, you know, he's the guy for right now for you there? Yeah, I mean, I think uh, Cody's uh, toughness level. Um, you know, he he's um, he's a depend extremely dependable guy. He's a smart player. He can play a multitude of you know multiple spots at the receiver position um, on a moment's notice without a lot of rep you know reps throughout the course of the week of practice. Um, he's been a competitive guy on special teams. He's been productive on special teams for us. Which when you're not in you know if you're not the one two three four receiver, you're going to have to do something in the kicking game. You know, realistically. Um, and he's, he's done a great job blocking. So, you know, all the things for that position, get open, catch, uh, block, dependability, intelligence, versatility. He embodies a lot of those characteristics. What do you like about Dennis Daly and, and his versatility, I guess, a, a key for him as he joins the team? Yeah, I mean, we played against him a couple years ago. I mean, he certainly kept – I remember he was at the senior ball. I think it was the same year that Nate was down there, uh, Davis. Um, I played mostly left tackle for those guys, but he's also played right tackle. He's played some guard. Uh, I think he's got good foot quickness. He's got some snap with his punch. You know, I thought, you know, he played, I think he started nine games last year and, and blocked a lot of good good players. Um, he don't win every rep, but he battles and fights and finishes and tries to stay in front of his guy. And uh, he was excited about the opportunity here and, you know, felt that adding, you know, depth to that position group was important for us and, you know, glad that he was available. So John, keeping guys. Go ahead, Joe. Role moving forward here. Yeah, I mean he's working. He's working mostly at tackle, Joe. You know, throughout the course of the spring and, and then through training camp, and then you know he's moved. He's getting some guard work now because if, you know, if you're not one of the first five, you, you want to be able to go in and play multiple spots. You know, we've seen we've seen his his work at tackle. He played guard some last year for us during you know practices and stuff. He played left tackle in the San Fran game last year. So, you know, working at guard now. You know, just trying to get brushed up because he spent so much time at tackle, so that he can punch in at any of those spots. What are some of the late guys like? Uh, Lonnie Johnson, Ugo, what, what did they do in order to come in and be able to earn a spot so quickly over a guy like Theo Jackson who was drafted? Yeah, I think, well, I mean, Theo missed a little bit of time there in the middle of training camp. We were able to get uh, Lonnie in here. Um, you know, he's, he's got a unique skill set in that he's played corner and he's played safety. Uh, he's a really long player. He's a fast player. He's an explosive player. Um, he did some things in the kicking game in the preseason that, you know, that kind of caught, that kind of caught our eye. Um, and we think he can play, you know, a couple of different spots. Theo's really improved. Um, glad that Theo's back with us on the practice squad. I keep working with him. He's working at a couple of different positions too. Um, and and Ugo, you know, he was here for like two or three days. You know, he certainly had a lot of film uh, in his time in Seattle. Uh, briefly uh, there with Philly, they kind of played him down there in the nickel role. Um, and then, you know, when we got him here, he played in the game and was productive in what we asked him to do. So his ability to I would say transition to what we do and learn and execute pretty quickly certainly bode well for him. What was so, so uh, impressive about Trey Avery and Julius Chestnut that they earned spots uh, on the 53? Yeah, that's a great, 
that's a great. I mean, I think with with Julius, uh, I mean, he he ran hard, he ran tough, he he played good on special teams. He caught, he actually caught the ball better than I thought he would, you know. Um, and, and you know, anything that we asked him to do, he didn't have a whole lot of mental errors. Um, he's just a guy that you know, I didn't, we didn't know if he, we could get him through waivers, but he also earned, you know, there earned the opportunity on the team. And then you know, Trey, you know, he was. He was a late addition to the to the undrafted class. He came in here, and I, I made the analogy yesterday. He was kind of seventh or eighth in the race uh, about midway through camp, and it seemed like once he got to turn four, you know, he just hitched up and kept running and kept passing guys up. He's competitive at the line of scrimmage. Uh, he's really sticky in coverage. Uh, he's got good play speed. He's got good instincts. And he doesn't he doesn't play the position like a rookie. He doesn't he's not intimidated. He gets up there and he lines up on his guy and he's reactive and he's really done a nice job. John, keeping Dez off the initial fifty three again, I guess maybe what's the message for him and what specifically do you guys want to see for from him in, in terms of continuing to grow? Well, it was a different conversation this year than it was a year ago, Ben. You know, I thought that he really had an outstanding off season. Um, he got off to a really good start in training camp, made some plays for us, and then the consistency bug kind of crept in there. You know, there were practices where it, it wasn't so good, um, and then you know he would rebound a little bit the next day, and then maybe drop the next day, and then really you know really turn it up the next. And, and I told him we, we we've just got to maintain that consistent level and work to improve a little bit. You can't have the highs and lows, you know, the peaks and valleys throughout the course uh, of your career improvement wise. And he acknowledged that, and he was excited to be back uh, here today and um, working on the practice squad. And I mean, we saw what he did last year. He improved throughout the course of the season last year, earned the right to get back up on the 53, and that's what the expectation level is for him this year. Looks like about 20% of the initial 53 is made up of rookies. What, did, what does that say about this team and what they were able to show you? Um, I mean, I think it's a competitive group, I and mean, we spent a lot of time with these guys, you know, in the in the in the draft process, being able to. You know, to be around them and get to know them, and um, they've came in. I was talking to uh, Chicky Giassi, our player development guy. He said this has been one of the better rookie classes from a standpoint of coming in here and being able to act like a, you know, what we expect a pro football player to act like, um, which is a testament to them and the universities that they universities that they came from, and um, you know their commitment to to us and to the process. Ty Sambrio that tackle who could plug in either side at, at a moment's notice. Do you have a clear-cut number three guy right now? Well, I think we're working through that, David. That's kind of why we've, you know, um, uh, Dylan's played on, on, on both sides. Um, Jamarco has played on both sides. Um, Dennis has played on, Daly has played on both sides. So, and we've got three guys that we think that have played on both of those sides on the end of the line of scrimmage. And, you know, they're, they're working at a couple of different spots. And, you know, whoever the best one is, if you know, if called upon, when called upon to go out there and play their spot, you know, we're going to expect them to be ready. What do you think went wrong? Gordon was going to visit today. Uh, NFL Network report. Um, I guess is that is that accurate? And and I guess if so, what what do you have to consider when you when you maybe bring in a guy like that just to take a look? Yeah, I mean, we're going to work out a lot of players throughout the course of the fall, uh, John, and uh, we don't comment on those guys. We'll com comment about the guys that are on the team. Um, and if players, when we've worked them out, if they end up on a team, then we'll talk about them. What do you think went wrong with the 2020 draft class? And is that something that you could you could learn from going forward? Um, well, I think, you know, Christian Fulton was in that class. Um, uh, Merch was in that class. Merch has made our, our team a couple times, and then he ended back up on the practice squad this year. We've got some guys in the, you know, that were undrafted that are on that class. I've spoke about the guys that aren't here anymore. I'm not going to talk about those guys again. Um, but I, I think that was that whole that whole period of time was it was kind of weird for all of us, right? Because we were in this pandemic, we were locked in our houses, and we couldn't do anything. And um, it certainly, I mean, we tried to go through our process, TD, but it was just different, and it wasn't. I, I personally didn't work, was not able to do what I normally do as I prep for you know for the draft. Is that a reason why that? On the flip side of that, the guys like uh, Nick Westbrook and Pierre Tart and Aaron Brewer slipped through the cracks in that draft, but turned out to be productive players. Possibly, yeah, possibly. I mean, we we did, certainly did our due diligence on those guys and identified those guys, and you know, those guys have taken the opportunity that we've given them here and um, really worked hard to improve. They're much better football players than they were when they got here. 
Uh, and that's a testament to those guys. Malik earlier, but did, was there ever a point where you thought you probably would have to keep three and then he progressed faster than maybe you even thought he would to make that decision a little bit easier to keep two? Yeah, I mean, really at every position group, Jim, we talk about numbers. You know, we're going to keep – how many offensive linemen are you going to keep? You're going to keep eight, you're going to keep nine, you're going to keep ten. How many DBs are you going to keep? How many quarterbacks are you going to keep? All those position groups we talk about. Um, you know, but I think, like I said earlier, I think Malik certainly improved throughout the course – of, of training camp, uh, certainly in the preseason games. And uh, we're excited to continue to work with him. And he knows he's got a lot to work on. And uh, we're excited to keep working with him. John Tannehill speaking. He said he wanted to come here with a passion for winning, unlike before. Now that you've gotten a full camp in, like, what have you seen from him from a leadership perspective, like how he's evolved that way? Yeah, I'm really vocal. I mean, he's always been a vocal guy. Uh, but I mean, really vocal, uh, talking to the receivers, talking to the tight ends about landmarks. Um, communicative with the offensive line, with what they're seeing front-wise and stuff. Um, uh, he's energized. He's jazzed up to be back out there with his teammates. You spoke as on how tough is it to say goodbye to a guy like Brett Kerr? Yeah, I mean Brett. You know, I think his you know his his career here speaks for for itself. I mean, he's been outstanding. Um, I mean, I made a statement uh, about him um, the other day and. Um, that's that's how I feel about Brett and, and his family. Just a great family and um, got a ton of respect for him. You spoke of kind of numbers at each position a second ago. Keeping seven defensive linemen, I guess, w what kind of went into that process and is that maybe a testament to um, how many guys you, you have there? Yeah, and I think some of those guys are flex players, Ben. I think they can maybe play a couple different spots. They're not necessarily – you know, this position or that position, they can kind of slide around to a couple of different spots. Um, but yeah, I think that's a good position group. I, I mean, I really had a good feeling that was a that was a deep position group when we went into training camp, and that certainly uh, proved correct as we you know we went through day after day after day and practice and game after game. How surprised were you that a Nenny cleared, and how excited are you to have him back with you on the practice squad to continue his development? Yeah, excited to keep working with with David. I mean, he's done some good things. He's improved uh, since he's got here. Um, you know, he, he's working at the end of the line of scrimmage. He's working to improve on special teams. Um, you know, all of those things. You know, as far as for you know, surprised that you cleared or not clear, you, you you never know. It's always uh, it's always a dice roll when you get to the waiver period. Traylon, I guess, uh, here over the first couple of months and how he maybe has progressed uh, since he got here. Yeah, improved, uh, really improved. Um, thought he had an outstanding uh, game the other night. Um, went in there and dug out a safety a couple times on, on runs, uh, which opened him up for a, you know, a really cool play that he, that he scored on. It was a great throw by Malik, great protection by the line. He stepped up in there, uh, got it around the defender, Traylon ran a great route, and um, you know, did a lot of things that we saw at Arkansas with the ball in his hands. Outran defenses and, and scored a touchdown. Did you guys make any any waiver claims, John? Um, no. Do you I know it's probably hard to say. Do you envision much more movement in, in terms of the roster before? Yeah, you'll see, so the when this process unfolds over the next three days, there's there seems like there's a new personnel notice about every five or six hours where. You know, there's the claims go in, and then you've got to make room on the on your roster, and so you've got to let somebody else go. So, and then there's another list of guys that come available. So, you know, we're working through that list of players that are available. Um, you know, I'm sure we'll you know we'll have some workouts here over the next couple of weeks um, and see if you know any of those guys can help us. This was the day off. She went golfing. She said to tell you that uh, she have an injury report for you next Wednesday. Good. I look forward to it. What do you guys got? Uh, we haven't seen Danico Autry on the practice field for a while. How's the progress he's been making throughout the course good. of the camp? Good. You know, good to see him back out there. He did some good things, and you know, we'll get get moving forward with him. <clears throat> to you, I guess, Mike, over the last 24 hours, maybe of communication with players, guys coming, guys going, and how how was that? Going? Well, I mean, we we know it's a difficult time. Haven't been through it, you know, um, as a player and a coach. It's um, it's not easy. We try to uh, communicate and visit with each guy, each person. Uh, they put a lot into it. Some of them have spent a lot of time with us. Um, you know, and we also try to communicate with the ones that, that we do want back, that we have all intentions of continuing to work with them. Um, we know how important the practice squad is, how critical it is to, you know, to our season, not only to, to us and the games that we would have to put, you know, use those guys in. We have done that a lot. Is also their development. I think quarterbacks, you know, 
league, will he ever help your you know scout team help you give the defense looks during the practice? That's every that's the backup quarterback's job. That's where they get their reps. So, you know, we try to put it in our terminology. You know, and we've we've talked a lot about that here in the last couple of days when you know we started just using some cards. Is that you know whether we put the call on there or not for you, you should be able to look at the formation, look at the play, and then translate that into our terms. And if it's not you know, and if we don't have it for whatever reason, um, you know, then then that's fine. Then run the card. But you know, we're asking those guys to to come out there, take control of the huddle, uh, the cadence, the operation. Make sure guys are lined up, and that's where he's getting his a lot of his reps. And so those can be good reps. Is there be anything different with him just because you're in this process of trying to also have him in your offense and everything, or is it just how it would be with anyone in that role? That how it would be with any backup quarterback. I mean, he's still preparing like. You know, he's going to be the starter, you know, so is Logan. And then, you know, he'll get some reps throughout the course of the day. But the majority of his work and every backup quarterback that I've been associated with, that's where their work is. What impressed you in camp in preseason with, about Julius Chestnut and Trey Avery? Uh, there's, I thought they came in and competed. You know, John talked a lot about the roster, I'm sure. So just keep it to... You know the Giants. With Tannehill, this camp, like, have you seen any change in the way he goes about leading this team? I hear who you say. I said with Ryan. Tannehill. Yeah, I'm sorry. Yeah, I mean, I think that he's had a very good camp. I think that you know you hear him talking through things and you know explaining the situations, whether we're in a group period or what we're working on. Um, you know, I think he's very conscious of of being vocal and you know working through things with tight ends that are new or receivers or you know, trying to you know, figure out where, where each and every guy is going to be and making sure that they're where he wants them. What's it like, you mentioned, you know, kind of looking toward the Giants. What's it like preparing for a team in week one that's going to have so much newness to it? Um, I know it's about getting your team ready, but how's the, how's the preparation go in preparing for somebody with a lot of unknowns? Well, I mean, we've, we've played against both coordinators and you know the head coach has been in Buffalo the defensive coordinator has been in uh, Baltimore so try to learn the personnel the best that we can try to anticipate what we may see from from them in all three phases you know most of the scheme stuff would probably come from you know somebody other than the Giants so you're watching the Giants for for personnel to see guys skill set how they play um, you know and then you're just trying to Trying to get them prepared the best that you can for the things that you think you might see. Did you see this week as kind of an extension of training camp in terms of working on what you need to work on while starting to put in what you need to do against the Giants, or how do you approach? This I think week? it's probably a little bit of both. You know, trying to um, use the time that we have to, to get some work in, to some competitive work, which we did today, and then you know also start to show them you know stuff that we we think we may see in the game. Daly is, is more of one or the other, more tackle or guard, or, or what are your thoughts? Oh, line, see where it kind of works out. He's got flexibility. How hard was the decision that had to be made on Brett? I mean, again, John touched on the roster. Um, my conversation with Brett was was fantastic. Can't can't uh, can't thank him enough for his professionalism. Um, my time with him personally, the impact that he's made over the four years that. I've been here uh, with him in this community, his football team. I've watched his kids grow up. It's good to have Bryce out here for training camp. It was really fun, you know. And and I know that you know I'm gonna have a you know good relationship with Brett, you know, moving forward. He's just a true professional. What's Des got to show you to kind of work his way back again? That, you know, possibly potentially getting to the 53. Same thing that you know. Hopefully, all the receivers, you know, being able to get open when we need them to. Being able to block when we need them to, catch, you know, contested catches. I guess with Brett John Taylor's kind of the elder statesman now, what is uh, what is his presence and leadership meant to this team since you've been here? Oh, well, I mean, I think we all know Taylor's personality. I think that that's something that has to be a strength for us. You know, his his energy, um, you know, his his vocalness. I mean, you hear him out there, and you know. He's had a good camp. He's been out there. He's improved. You know, trying to work on some things. So that's um, it's always a positive. You know, he's never asked for a day off. He's never done that. We've tried to take care of him the best that we can. Um, 
you know, and I think and I'm hopeful that that leadership continues. How has Nicholas P. Pereira grown at his position, and what more can he do? Do you think as he evolves as an NFL player to learn that spot? Well, I just so much different, you know, things that he sees from looks and scheme from our defense or. You know, Tampa and Arizona, and then now going, you know, looking forward to the Giants. You know, that's a lot of stuff. So each block or each play, you know, based on the front, you know, there's a lot more to it than than that. You know, I think when sometimes in pass protection, that's probably the easiest thing that they have is because it's, you know, tackle usually has the end unless, you know, there's pressure or something else happens. So, you know, with that, it's just really just being good at the top of the pocket and, you know, using his length, using his size. But, I think he's adjusting to, to the different looks in the run game. Have a great day, guys. Enjoy the sunshine.